My name is Ruth Bramley. Uh, I worked um, at Sinclair Research from 1981 until 1984. Uh, and my job initially was technical advisor. That was my original job title. But I did various things along the way. <laughs> so this is the ZX80. Um, when I had my interview uh, with Clive, uh, his leaving gesture to me was, uh, here, have a ZX80 to play with. So I did. I, I had a lot of fun playing with my ZX80 on, on uh, the um, television, mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. And uh, so it's, it, 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 has, it has a, the touch screen, of course, it has the touch screen uh, keyboard, touch, the touch sensitive <laughs> keyboard, touch screen. <laughs> Touch sensitive Second keyboard. Second now, isn't it? It is. You yes. say touch, you touch, say screen. Touch sensitive keyboard, uh, which works by putting two contacts together. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, there were. This was a, a very new, a very new thing. Having keywords, so you didn't have to type out mm. P R I N T to print or L O A D for load. You had keys that were would automatically do the keywords. So as you started programming, once you put your line number in, you then as soon as you pressed the key that had a key word on. So, um, you know, if you wanted to, to print something, you'd press the P, you know, the O key, mm. which had the key word print. So you do 10 print just by pressing O. So you didn't have to type five letters, which was um, a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> so a whole new thing. Um, they had a reputation for getting rather warm because the heat sink, I think it's just under here, there used to be a joke that you could fry an egg on it. I never tried it. <laughs> um, that's the ZX80. Um, the ZX81, which came out in 1981, obviously uh, everybody knows uses a Z80 processor, as does that. Um, again, the wonderful touch-sensitive keyboard. This time, a nice matte feel. I always, always liked the feel of this. Mm. It's, it was rather a nice texture. Um, Rick Dickinson's work, of course. And the this became quite iconic, the, the matte black with the Sinclair logo and the, the ZX81, and then later the, the, the Spectrum um, followed the same idea. So, uh, yes, brilliant thing. And, uh, of course, the socket at the back for the RAM pack, which used to cause all sorts of problems when it came loose. I <laughs> gave instructions to many people on how to clean... <laughs> The contacts at the back. Okay. The cotton bud and surgical spirit works uh -huh. very nicely. All right. And then, of course, the Spectrum. The wonderful ZX Spectrum. I don't know if this is a 16K or a 48K. Um, doesn't matter. They look the same from yeah. the outside. Uh, I think you had to peer inside to see yeah. what it was. I think later they might have actually had on it what the... the underneath they had the, uh, the little label, didn't they? It? But, but uh, um, that's an earlier one, I think. This is an earlier one. Uh, Again, we've got this rather nice keyboard, but this was a development from, from this touch-sensitive um, keyboard, which just worked on two um, contacts being touched. This is actually the same, but it had the rubber keys, which were... I really like the feel of them, actually. They're good. They do. Yeah, I like them. I thought they were good. Um, the, uh, this was more complicated because, as well as your keywords, which are printed in white on the keys, each key had up to five uses. So, for example, um, the, uh, let's choose one that's got some nice things on it that I can read without my glasses. Um, well, at any of these keys, you've got, you've got the, obviously the letter key. Mm -hmm. You've got something um, in green above it, which is um, one of the keywords. And you've also got in red underneath the, another keyword, which you could get to by using this, the caps shift key. Um, and I haven't used one for a very long, a long time. Symbol shift got you the red things, yeah. cap shift got you the green things above, mm -hmm. and then the keywords, the, the copy and the print and things like that were as on the ZX81. Um, and also you had colour. You had a wonderful selection of colours. This Not your 256 that you might have <laughs> now, or minimum. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But you did have seven, six. Seven, including Something white. Like that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was the first machine in that range to, to have yeah, colour, wasn't absolutely. it? Um, and sound, for that matter. And sound, yes. Beep. <laughs> well, yeah. you could play music. Actually, you had different yeah. tones of beep. Mm -hmm. um, there was a there was a, a fun game I remember called Psst. Oh yeah. <laughs> P S S T. Mm -hmm. And it was to do with squirting different bugs with different 
chemicals to stop them eating the plants so the plant would flower. That I spent many happy... I, that was one game I did quite enjoy. Ah, so that one did get you, didn't uh, it? I didn't work too well on a black and white television, which is what we had at home at the time. Um, and of course then, there was the magnificent ZX printer, mm. which smelled amazing. <laughs> it did. Like, you can't really smell it. When it was actually working, it had, it had a quite distinct yeah. smell. As, as it was um, sort of burning, was onto, burning the, onto the paper. Burning yeah. onto the paper. Um, yeah, the, the ZX printer, which again was a, a quite an important development. Mm -hmm. um, I never had one, but there was the, the drive, the micro drive, yep. which, as I say, I never had one, but mm -hmm. that, that I think must have made quite a difference um, moving on from the cassette recorder. Yeah, absolutely. And it was the, the cheap cassette recorders worked best, we found, mm -hmm. not the expensive ones. They were the ones okay. that were more reliable. I knew all about azimuth and cleaning heads <laughs> and stuff. Um, yeah, so there you go. And of course, there was you could increase the the basic 1K to 16K. Full 16K. 16K. I mean, how would you fill that? No, absolutely. Well, you couldn't because the ramp pack kept wobbling. <laughs> well, exactly, yes. <laughs> A bit of blue tack never hurt. <laughs> Gaffer tape. Yeah. Fantastic. So it's, it's really important to say, I think, um, that, that these machines were all built down to a price point. You know, they were, uh, they were, they were cheap. far cheaper than, than the competition, oh, yeah. um, which is ma what made them so important. Yes. Um, people could afford to buy them. Yes. Um, and it, for a lot of people, it was their first experience of Absolutely. computing. Um, I, I have a friend who's a professor of um, computing. I won't give his name, but he's at Cambridge. And he, when he found out what, I, what I'd done you know, in my career, he said, did you... Yes, he said, you worked for Sinclair in the 1980s. I said, yes. He said, I've got, I had a letter from you. He said, you started me programming. He said, I'd, well, I, he said, I'd started and I got a little way in and then had a query and I wrote to you and you replied. And he said, I'm now professor of computing. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. He said, thank you. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah. So, Must yeah. be a really, really nice feeling to know that you've been a part yeah. of all that. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, my own children, well, my elder one who's an adult, now works for ARM. Mm -hmm. And he started by typing a very simple program that I showed him when he was about four mm -hmm. that filled the screen with his name, Feed the Ego. That program there? Well, <laughs> exactly the same, except <laughs> it was his name, not mine. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. The very first calculator that I bought when I was 17, probably, um, I was in the first year at school allowed to use calculators at A level which is hard to imagine now. Mm. And um, I saved up my hard-earned Saturday job money from working as a, a shop girl in um, Marks and Spencer's in Wembley uh, to buy myself a calculator. As my maiden name was Sinclair, <laughs> I had to have a Sinclair calculator. <laughs> I didn't want a Japanese one. I wanted a Sinclair calculator. It cost a lot of money. I think, it, uh, from memory, I think it was about £20 may have been more which was a great deal of money yeah. then when you think now you can buy a calculator for a fiver mm. it's incredible you know but i needed a scientific calculator i couldn't deal with just a, an ordinary one uh just a basic calculator because i was doing maths a level and physics a level so i needed a, a, a scientific calculator and the sinclair oxford 300 it really fit the bill and it had a lovely display. It's a shame you don't have a battery in it because the display is magnificent. Is this one of the original ones with the purple and yeah. red? It's beautiful. <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> it had a magnificent purple display, the purple background with red LED characters on it and the, it gobbled up batteries like nothing on earth. <laughs> so I did have a power supply as well because I couldn't afford to feed its battery habit. <laughs> there you go. Good stuff. Well, thank you very much indeed. Um, one question that I did miss out, I don't quite know how, because I did have it written down anyway. Um, but uh, uh, the film Micromen. The film um, Micromen, I love it. <laughs> so, so tell me a bit about Micromen. How, how, in your opinion, does it sum up that story? How accurate is it? Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. The set is fantastic. The, um, the scenes in the, the King's Parade office absolutely spot on you've got that perfectly that's so good um the uh i don't remember clive being so bad tempered mm. i really don't remember that side of him at all right maybe it's time has washed that but 
I don't remember that. Certainly, I never saw it. Mm -hmm. um, it's fairly accurate. I think the actor who plays the part of Jim Westwood is a dead ringer for the young Jim Westwood. <laughs> Fantastic. What does Jim Westwood think of that? Did, I have did, no idea. But I know he and I know he and his wife Judy uh, appear uh, in the film, yeah. which I think is a lovely yeah. touch. That's yeah. really nice. Um, a lot of it is very accurate. I, I think there's there's a certain amount of um, poetic license, mm. should we say? Mm. But that's fine. It's it's partly drama. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's There's part time it's, compression yeah, as well. It's fine. I don't remember the fight. Right. I really can't remember the fight. That's it must theoretically, if it happened, it happened whilst I was there. Mm. I really don't remember it. Mm. So it may it probably wasn't anywhere near as big a deal as it was made out to be in the film, um, because I don't remember it at all. Right. Um, and. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Poetic no, it, life. It, it, it's, it a, it's a drama. It has, yeah. it has a lot of the truth in there. Mm. There's a lot of, of what was going on. Uh, I think some of the timing perhaps isn't quite accurate. No, absolutely. But, yeah. um, for example, I, I don't think Nigel Sull was in the country in the bit where he's shown. I think he was still in America then. Mm. Um, but a lot of it is very accurate. Mm. Um, and I, I, I did notice the Richard Altvassar character in there. Who wasn't given a name in the film, mm. but I'm pretty sure when he and Jim, I think, are sitting around watching a, a program on the television, yeah, that would be Richard in there, <laughs> <laughs> who I shared an office with. But yes, <laughs> brilliant. Excellent. So it's, it's, I think, in terms of the way uh, Sir Clive was portrayed, um, you're one of the very few to say that you didn't experience. In fact, you might be the only that I've come across so far. Perhaps because um, I'm a redhead. Well, yeah, <laughs> so, um, so he obviously treated you a lot better than, than most. I, I, um, never, but, I never ever, yeah, I, I, I never witnessed him being aggressive towards anyone. Yeah. He was certainly never aggressive towards me at all, ever. Yeah. He was always really nice and that was fine. That's good. interesting. So no, nice chap. Nice Brilliant. chap, Brilliant man. Mm. <laughs> Incredibly clever, and absolutely. And not my father. <laughs> <laughs> just so that's on record. Yeah, just for the record. <laughs> Great stuff. Well, thank you very much and thank you for your time. Um, really appreciate it. It's been really interesting. Um, thank you very much. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>